Hey Juan, it's Jordan here, how's it going? Uh, I just uploaded my review of Umihara, don't know if you've seen it or not. Uh, anyways, I'm free now, what do we got? I know May's gonna be really busy, we've got like Resident Evil, Team Sonic Racing, Saints Row, give me something good boy. I'm Jordan from Switchwatch and this is Panty Party. Firstly, I just want to point out that Panty Party isn't anywhere near as bad as you think. It's not as sleazy as it may seem from the title or game artwork. Really, it's more funny than anything else. There's no nudity, no partial nudity, it's a game of floating panties and is very much safe for work. Don't worry. Believe it or not, there is a story to Panty Party. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's a wonderful tale of political intrigue, nor of a whirlwind adventure, because it's obviously not. It's a ridiculous tongue-in-cheek story of a young girl who's late for school. On her way, she bumps into a sentient levitating panty who declares her to be the warrior of love who will stop an evil panty from, well... To be honest, do I really need to see it anymore? I could explain it, but I feel a bit daft, to be honest. You turn into a pair of panties and fight other panties. What I will say is that it's so ridiculous and nonsensical that I actually enjoyed it. The dialogue and situation is humorous, but it isn't the reason to play. At least they tried. Panty Party is a 3D brawler, a simple but effective one. The main campaign takes you through stages of beating up other panties in smallish arenas. You only have a limited moveset with three attacks. Of the dozen or more panties, they all have a different moveset, I believe, although I'm sure you'll forgive me for not sampling all of them to make sure. Usually you have a mix of melee attacks and long range ones, which are needed to fend off the hordes of enemy panties that will try to take you down. The main meat of the game will be in the story mode, which you progress through a dozen or more stages as you try to take down the evil panty. Stages play out very predictably in which you first fend off a few waves of disposable grunts before taking on the stage boss, a unique panty with unique traits and is a far more challenging foe. Each stage you complete, you're offered the chance to achieve some extra goals such as completing it in a fast time without losing one heart or getting a high enough score. Do this and you will unlock another panty to play as. Yay! Surprisingly, you will be happy to try out all the different panties in order to get a feel for which one suits your style the best. I know, I'm disappointed these words are coming out of my mouth and no doubt will be quoted out of context in the future, but I need to give praise where praise is due. All the panties feel different, I enjoyed trying out some more than others for sure, and I had a penchant for those with better long range potential than those close up melee attackers. I should also mention that there is a passion meter, which steadily increases and, when full, can unleash a super mode, which is unique to each panty at the press of the ZL button. Some will increase your defense, reload speed, or even turn one of your attacks into something with a bit more wallop. You'll definitely want to keep an eye out on this gauge filling up as you'll want to turn it on at every opportunity to give you the extra edge over your foes. It's not a packed game by any means. The main campaign will last you a couple of hours, but there's also an arcade mode to sample, as well as local multiplayer for up to four people. Arcade mode has a split path progression, kind of like Outrun, we have like forks in the road, which means there are multiple endings to sample. Aside from that, it's still your basic gameplay of one big boss surrounded by the grunts. I like the gameplay. As stated, it's simple but satisfying. Managing your attacks, their reloads, your distance, as well as making ample use of the dodge rolls makes this a game that you have to keep focused on at all times. It's not exactly Bayonetta in its polish or quality of action by any means, but it's still basic fun. The enemy AI doesn't pull any punches and your health can drain fast if you're not careful enough. Most grunts will respawn if you don't take out the washing machine, which is where they enter the fray. So there are some different things to think about. One of my biggest gripes is with the aiming sensitivity. It's both unresponsive and overly responsive. There's no nuance to it. If you want subtle movements with the analog stick, it won't move until you've at least pushed the stick past the halfway. 
at which point it will fly wildly far past where you wanted to aim. This game 100% should have included gyro aiming. It's what makes all shooters tick on the Switch these days and it's a major oversight. Maybe in a patch? I doubt it. In regards to multiplayer, you and up to three other real people can battle it out or play with the computer if you can't blackmail that many friends to play Panty Party with you. The footage you're seeing here is me and my wife who had to awkwardly ask to help me out with this one and I wouldn't be surprised if she's already started divorce proceedings. Thanks Panty Party. Customization is slim, unfortunately, and although I can see it being quite fun for a few rounds, it probably won't last much longer than that in its current state. Unfortunately, there is no online play, which I feel is a missed opportunity. I know it's a budget title, but online gameplay would have been fantastic and would have added much longevity if given the right setup. Due to the ridiculous premise, it's probably not the kind of game you want to play with your mate sitting next to you. I mean, how do you bring that up in conversation? Hey, you fancy coming over and playing some panty party? Yeah, your friendship is over, man. With anonymity online, you get far more play out of it. If it had a setup like Splatoon in terms of progress, ranks, customization, and modes, it would have had so much potential. There's not really a whole lot to say aside from that. It's a simple game with simple gameplay and modes to sample. It does what it does decent though, especially for the price point which I'll get into soon. In the audio, you've got a very Japanese pop feel, which I love. It's very upbeat and quirky, which is something that we all love, I'm sure. If you like the funky tracks in something like Taiko no Tatsujin games, then you'll love this too. Sure, there's not a whole lot of different pieces, but what there is here is very catchy. Indeed, the limited edition copy that I'll talk about soon too, includes a soundtrack CD. For such a cheap title, I was surprised to find that Panty Party is actually fully voice acted in Japanese of course, and not only that, but it's actually rather good and on par with the standard anime affair that you'll find in games like Senran Kagura or Fate X Stella, and all of that. Indeed, it's rather well acted because it's the voice acting that brings the humour out of the dialogue. Although it has slightly tainted my review of the lovely Taiko no Tatsujin because even though I'm sure I'm wrong, the main panty sidekick sounds exactly like the Taiko drum. They will forever be crossed in my mind. Visually the game is on the basic side, as is the presentation as a whole. It looks like a HD resolution Dreamcast game which may seem insulting but I personally have a lot of fondness for that console and its quirky bold looks. Environments are very blocky and textures are flat but it's bright and colourful and does the job. The panties themselves are animated well enough, I can't believe I just said that, and the between fight cutscenes are drawn nice and I very much enjoyed the over the top screen shakes and size changes of the artwork to show emphasis in emotions. It's great and makes what would otherwise be a very static situation into something more alive and dynamic. Performance wise unfortunately it's not quite perfect, it's mostly smooth but there is the odd stutter here and there which is weird because it really shouldn't happen at all because it's such a simplistic game. It's not a major annoyance but it is highly noticeable especially at the beginning of stages. I noticed this happened far more in handheld mode though so if you play in docked mode you don't really have to worry about that. On the eShop Panty Party is going for £9.99 in the UK, $14.99 in the US and €14.59 in Europe. It's a cheap price for sure and reasonable one for a compact little package that Panty Party is. I think that's reasonable enough, you'll probably get a handful of hours out of it if you want to do everything and there is local multiplayer if you fancy tainting your friendships forever. The lack of online play does take the value down somewhat though and I think if that had been included with a proper progression system, it would have been on the money and a bargain. Sadly, it just wasn't in their budget. Believe it or not, this 15 bucks game is receiving a physical copy thanks to East Asia Soft, sold exclusively through Play Asia. Not only a standard edition, but also a limited collector's edition too. Now that's where things get interesting. Included in the collector's edition is not only a soundtrack CD, some stickers, but also a pair of knickers. Yes, your very own panty party panties. Now how can you say no to that? Is it odd that I'm slightly interested myself? Anyways, I'll pop some links in the description as well as the pinned comment where you can find these because I know I've piqued your interest, especially the hardcore collectors out there who will need this one. And I timed this video release to be in line with the pre-order opening so you don't miss out. These are affiliate links so we will take a small cut from each sale which helps us out massively at no extra cost to you guys. Overall, Panty Party is not as horrendous as you may be led to believe by the name or artwork. It's actually quite a fun brawler wrapped up in a very cheeky visual package. Cheeky is the word. 
This is safe for TV and it isn't anything to feel uncomfortable over unless you're scared of levitating sentient skivvies. I mean, you might not want to play this on the bus, but as a fun aside, it's just that it's fun. A simple brawler that you can find some enjoyment over. It's not great and it's not going to be an instant buy, but it is what it is. And it really needed online play to make it shine. I'm not going to lavish it with a big score, but it's an almost decent 6 out of 10 from me. If you wanted something slightly less safe for work, then consider heading over to watch my reviews of Senran Kagura Reflections or perhaps Dead or Alive Extreme 3 Scarlet on the Nintendo Switch. I've been Jordan from Switchwatch, and I'll see you guys over there. Take care. Bye.